Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Our Small Footprint. My name is Nessa, and we are a family of eight who live off-grid in Australia. Now, my channel has been a little bit uh, silent recently because all eight of us came down with COVID. But we are on the mend now. Still not better. Still coughing and a bit congested and a bit tired and a bit worn out and that sort of thing but we are getting there so I am trying to get back into the rhythm of doing the videos uh, we will see how it goes but this is the first one back that is pretty normal for me uh, so Normally I do a daily video for a couple of weeks post my six week grocery haul But my most recent six week grocery haul is where I came down with COVID so I haven't been doing a great deal of uh, editing or anything. I have been filming bits and pieces though. So some of these videos are going to be a little bit out of sync. Um, I'm going to try and slot in the things that are the same in the same videos and things like that. Like if I've done something over a couple of days, I'll put it into one video, but um, they're not going to be quite day by day like I would normally like to do them. Uh, I just fell out of the rhythm and it's too hard to pull that back a week later. But I am going to share because everyone likes to watch them and I enjoy filming what I'm doing. I think it gives me a little bit more push to do it sometimes by knowing that I'm filming it and that sort of thing. It's just that the editing and stuff has uh, gone on the back burner because it just it takes so much time and I just haven't had the energy. But today's video is actually yesterday's kitchen. Um, I thought I'd start off with nice and fresh in my mind so I can get the voiceover done and sort of fall back into that rhythm a little bit. And I managed to spend a fair bit of time in the kitchen yesterday trying to make sure that we don't waste anything that has been sitting in the fridge for the last week because of not feeling well. So I smoked a whole lot of chicken breasts. I did brines up for silver sides. Um, I don't know what else, but I will do the voiceover for it and share it with you and enjoy. And hopefully I will get back to probably every second day, not every day. I don't think I'm quite up to every day at the moment, but probably every second day getting one of these videos out that everyone really enjoys watching. So I will see you again next time. Thanks guys. So to start off the day, what I needed to do was do stuff with things that were in the fridge that had been there for long enough now things that needed to be used or were close to their best before so that they didn't get wasted we did waste a bit of vegetable in the process of everything it didn't get wasted as such it went to animals but still uh, I definitely didn't want to have that happen with anything that was more expensive so the first thing I worked on was some chicken so I have some chicken breast trays that were in the fridge I don't know if I bought these trays for something specific I, I can't remember but I bought two trays and I don't like to uh, freeze it raw because I find that if I freeze something raw by the time I want to do something with it I forget to defrost it I don't like to quick defrost chicken because it never the texture is never quite right and it just it doesn't work particularly well for me so I do some have some chicken in the freezer raw that I use uh, on specific occasions but most of the time I don't like to freeze it raw so what I decided to do is something I haven't done for ages and that is to smoke it so first up I used I made up this uh, sweet and spicy type rub that I use for my chicken and I do that in parts I do that in uh, with brown sugar some salt some pepper smoked paprika garlic powder onion powder and ground mustard and I mix that up now it has a fair bit of sugar in it but the sugar is what keeps the meat moist when it's in the smoker because the sugar turns to liquid so it creates sort of a a wet marinade as well as a dry on the chicken so I, I highly recommend keeping that in there uh, and so the kids helped me mix all those spice mixes up for that chicken uh, I did enough for both trays I like to put the it pretty generously on there so what I do is I drizzle a bit of olive oil on the chicken breasts that are in the from the trays and then I cover them well in the 
seasoning. I like to make sure that the seasoning gets inside the little pocket so where that tenderloin lifts up and things like that. So I tuck the seasoning in there as well as uh, on the outside edges, pat it in well. If your spices are all the same uh, texture, then it's going to stick a little bit better. I did have some granulated garlic here instead of powdered garlic, which means that some of the chunks don't stick as well towards the beginning as they do at the end but that's just life I wasn't I didn't grind it all up so but the more uniform your spice mix is the more uniformly it will stay on your chicken uh, I put the digital thermometer into the thickest breast on this tray so each tray of chicken will fit around about one tray of the smoker and my smoker can hold four trays so I've got two trays worth in this one so I put the digital thermometer in the thickest part the thickest breast on the tray and then did the second tray and did the same process so I just drizzled it with olive oil and then covered them in the seasoning and made sure to pat as much of that seasoning on as possible towards the end where as I'd said before because it wasn't as uniform there was some chunks left just made sure to put those chunks on the ones that were left it's all going to taste the same in the end anyway uh, and put that on the tray as well and stuck that but put both trays into the smoker so the smoker that I have is a dual fuel smoker it has gas start but I can use wood in it as well uh, I put the one with the thermometer in it on the lower shelf because the heat is higher towards the bottom so then that way that bottom shelf will be done first and then I can swap the thermometer to the tray above it once that's done and I used wood chunks from our property so we there's a specific red gum that we really like the smell and taste of when we smoke so as we've been finding branches of it we cut little uh, rings off and we've been cutting them in half to use as the chunks for the smoker this wood was a little bit damp because uh my kitchen got wet when it rained but it'll be fine for smoking purposes while that was doing its thing the other thing that i have to do is we had some silver side from the quarter of a cow that i had bought and i didn't get it corned i just wanted a fresh silver side so i was needing to corn it myself. Uh, Elise, a friend online, had sent me a brine to try a while back and we had really enjoyed it. So she sent me a link to a place with the one that she based it on. So I used that as some of the ratios for what I did and I made my own sort of corning brine mix up for the silver side. So I mixed a bunch of spices together, uh, salt, some sugar the curing salt pink salt some pepper i toasted some coriander seeds there's some crushed bay leaves some mustard seeds some thyme caraway a cinnamon stick um, and put it all in the mix uh, i actually forgot to put any garlic in it which so i will probably add that later but um some garlic in that brine will be nice too so once i mixed all the ingredients up together what i did was i put the um, silver side into Ziploc bags, gallon Ziploc bags, with each, with the brining spice mix, and then filled it with water. So uh, once it was full of water, I zipped it up, we got as much air as possible and zipped it up. I made two of these because we had two silver sides, and what I'll do is I'll probably smoke them afterwards, and then they can be eaten cold meat for however long it lasts, uh, being silver side once it's corned it'll last longer in the fridge again like I can then seal it up and put it in the fridge again uh, so I did the same process the second time round and put the other I mixed up a whole new batch because this is done for a, a sort of a three to five pound roast so this this curing salt is the quantity for three to five pound roast and each of these are four pounds each so I mixed up a whole new batch of the spice mix and then put it with the other one in the Ziploc bag and covered it with water and stuck it in the fridge. So I stuck them both in the fridge. These will take five to seven days to cure. So I will just make sure to go in and, and rotate the bags slightly. They look to be well covered in water, but I'll go in and double check and I'll rotate the bags as needed, but it'll be five to seven days that these will sit in the fridge before I can cook them. 
this is what the chicken looks like when it's done. It's lovely and moist, uh, really well seasoned. Uh, it's sliced one up for us to try and snack on and the, it's really juicy. And the, when we put it, I pull it out of the smoker, I put it in the tray, cover it in foil, and then it'll go in the fridge. And then the next day I will slice it all up to store. So it holds its juice in, rests, holds its juice in and works really well. We'll have some of this for dinner tonight, I think. Uh, we haven't been eating much, but I decided that I'd make something nice for dinner so uh, we will have this with it because we can so for dinner what I decided to do was I decided I wanted pasta um, as I said we haven't been eating much lately so I haven't really been cooking a whole lot of we've just been having bread and meats and the occasional I make the kids things but yeah not a whole lot just haven't felt like food and food doesn't taste quite normal it, it's not that we like we haven't lost our sense of taste because you can taste it but it just doesn't taste quite right I've sort of gone off coffee and it's all it's been a bit strange but I decided that I was going to make one of our favorite meals tonight which there is a short on here of what it is and that's the pesto lemon pasta but I really like it with this smoked chicken so when I made the smoked chicken I sort of went well I think I'm going to do that and uh, but I like it with sourdough pasta as well so I made a little bit more work for myself but that's that's fine so I made my sourdough pasta uh, I have made this before on here but it's basically three eggs 100 grams of sourdough starter 400 grams of flour and 30 grams of olive oil I put in a food processor I use my Thermomix and it just pulsed until it turns into the little balls and then you turn those balls out onto a board and you bring it together. Now, if this was a standard dough, it would be a lot wetter, but because it's sourdough, it's a little bit dry. And we do that on purpose because the sourdough is going to hydrate that uh, the flour more. So if you made it the right consistency to start with, it would end up too slack and sticky to roll out. So you want sourdough pasta to be a little dry and then you let it ferment so ideally I would normally let this ferment for like 12 hours and then stick it in the fridge for a day but I was in a hurry because I decided this is what I wanted so I pulled it all into a ball and then covered it in plastic wrap and just let it sit on the counter for a few hours and then used it uh, I use my KitchenAid to roll out my pasta dough uh, it makes life a lot easier I have had manual rollers and things like that but this this I really enjoy uh, I also have a pasta extruder that I've used on the channel as well but it doesn't work for sourdough pasta it's the wrong consistency extruded pasta dough is a very different consistency to uh, rolling out pasta dough and it has a different taste to it as well and a different texture to it uh, I don't mind the extruded pasta but I don't I prefer this style for this particular dish so I used my KitchenAid and I roll it out like normal. I start on the number eight, which is the thickest, and work my way down to one, slowly lowering it and pushing it through as I go. Uh, it's, it's a lovely silky dough, this one, so it goes through quite easily and it's just, it, it handles really nicely. Once it all goes through the roller, then I hand cut it so I don't have the cutting attachment for the KitchenAid because I don't think I'd find it convenient because you'd have to roll it and then swap it to cut it and I don't think that would work real well for me so I hand cut it I just have one of those little uh, cutting blades that are used for pasta and biscuits and pastry and things like that and I just slice it and roughly it really doesn't matter to us how thick or thin it is the pasta is such a good texture that even when it's quite bulky it doesn't really matter and I hand slice it and hang it on the pasta drying rack so ideally it sits on the pasta drying rack for a couple of hours so that it dries a little bit um, and eventually like I'd normally make it in bulk and then eventually I would portion it out into freezer bags and it goes in the freezer uh, this was just a fairly small batch this is only a single batch I regularly make uh, triples or quadruple batches but this was just a single batch so it's only two meals worth so I just used what we needed to use fresh for this meal and then I put the rest um, left the rest to dry up where the mice couldn't get it and we will and I'll stick it in the freezer in the morning. Uh, that's, 
I did forget to film the actual making of the meal but as I said I'll try and link the short that has the meal because it's it's really nice it's egg yolks and pesto and uh, lemon juice and then uh, a cowboy candy brine's really nice in it and you mix it all up and you cook it with the pasta and you have it with the smoked chicken it's just a really lovely fresh meal it's not too heavy but it's comforting it's really nice it's definitely worth giving a go if you decide you want to so thank you very much for joining me this was my first sort of full day back in the chick in the kitchen uh, and I still didn't get huge amounts done but it felt like an accomplishment so thank you very much for joining me and I will see you again next time <laughs>